Hi. It's very hot, isn't it? I'm from Scotland. I am not used to this. I'm going to read to you a little bit from this book. Has anyone read this book? Hooray! So I don't need to explain too much what I'm going to read, but I will for the people who haven't read it. So this book is about a boy who doesn't realize he's a wizard until a man called Hagrid from a wizarding school comes to tell him so and takes him shopping for everything he needs to go to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. So I'm going to read you a little bit of the book where Harry gets the most exciting thing that you would need if you were about to learn to become a wizard. The last shop was narrow and shabby. Peeling gold letters over the door read, Ollivanders, makers of fine wands since 382 BC. A single wand lay on a faded purple cushion in the dusty window. A tinkling bell rang somewhere in the depths of the shop as they stepped inside. It was a tiny place, empty except for a single spindly chair that Hagrid sat on to wait. Harry felt strangely as though he had entered a very strict library. He swallowed a lot of new questions that had just occurred to him and looked inst instead at the thousands of narrow boxes piled neatly right up to the ceiling. For some reason, the back of his neck prickled. The very dust and silence in here seemed to tingle with some secret magic. Good afternoon, said a soft voice. Harry jumped. Hagrid must have jumped too because there was a loud crunching noise and he got quickly off the spindly chair. An old man was standing before them, his wide pale eyes shining like moons through the gloom of the shop. Hello, said Harry awkwardly. Ah, yes, said the man. Yes, yes. I thought I'd be seeing you soon, Harry Potter. It wasn't a question. You have your mother's eyes. It seems only yesterday she was in here herself buying her first wand, 10 and a quarter inches long, swishy, made of willow. Nice wand for charm work. Mr. Ollivander moved closer to Harry. Harry wished he would blink. Those silvery eyes were a bit creepy. Your father, on the other hand, favored a mahogany wand, 11 inches, pliable, a little more power and excellent for transfiguration. Well, I say your father favored it. It's really the wand that chooses the wizard, of course. Mr. Ollivander had come so close that he and Harry were almost nose to nose. Harry could see himself reflected in those misty eyes. And that's where Mr. Ollivander touched the lightning scar on Harry's forehead with a long white finger. I'm sorry to say I sold the wand that did it, he said softly. 13 and a half inches, you. Powerful wand, very powerful, and, and in the wrong hands. Well, if I'd known what that wand was going out into the world to do. He shook his head, and then, to Harry's relief, he spotted Hagrid. Rebeus, Rebeus Hagrid, how nice to see you again. Oak, 16 inches, rather bendy, wasn't it? It was, sir, yes, said Hagrid. Good wand, that one. But I suppose they snapped it in half when you got expelled, said Mr. Ollivander, suddenly stern. Er, uh, yes, they did, yes, said Hagrid, shuffling his feet. I've still got the pieces, though, he added brightly. But you don't use them, said Mr. Ollivander quickly. Oh, no, sir, said Hagrid. Harry noticed he gripped his pink umbrella very tightly as he spoke. Hmm, said Mr. Ollivander, giving Hagrid a piercing look. Well, now, Mr. Potter, let me see. He pulled a long tape measure with silver markings out of his pocket. Which is your wand arm? Uh, well, I'm right-handed, said Harry. Hold out your arm, that's it. He measured Harry from shoulder to finger, then wrist to elbow, shoulder to floor, knee to armpit, and round his head. As he measured, he said, every Ollivander wand has a core of a powerful magical substance, Mr. Potter. We use unicorn hairs, phoenix tail feathers, and the heartstrings of dragons. No two Ollivander wands are the same, just as no two unicorns, dragons, or phoenixes are quite the same. And of course, you will never get such good results with another wizard's wand. Harry suddenly realized that the tape measure, which was measuring between his nostrils, was doing this on its own. Mr. Ollivander was flitting around the shelves, taking down boxes. That will do, he said, and the tape measure crumpled into a heap on the floor. Right then, Mr. Potter, try this one. Beechwood and dragon heartstring. Nine inches, nice and flexible. Just take it and give it a wave. 
Harry took the wand and, feeling foolish, waved it around a bit. But Mr. Ollivander snatched it out of his hand almost at once. Maple and phoenix feather, seven inches, quite whippy, try. Harry tried, but he had hardly raised the wand when it too was snatched back by Mr. Ollivander. No, no, here, ebony and unicorn hair, eight and a half inches, springy. Go on, go on, try it out. Harry tried and tried. He had no idea what Mr. Ollivander was waiting for. The pile of tried wands was mounting higher and higher on the spindly chair, but the more wands Mr. Ollivander pulled from the shelves, the happier he seemed to become. Tricky customer, eh? I wonder now. Yes, why not? Unusual combination, holly and phoenix feather, 11 inches, nice and supple. Harry took the wand. He felt a sudden warmth in his fingers. He, waved, he raised the wand above his head, brought it swishing down through the dusty air, and a stream of red and gold sparks shot from the end like a firework, throwing dancing spots of light onto the walls. Hagrid whooped and clapped, and Mr. Ollivander cried, Oh, bravo! Yes, indeed! Oh, very good! Well, well, well. How curious. How very curious. He put Harry's wand back into its box and wrapped it in brown paper, still muttering, Curious. Curious. Sorry, said Harry, but what's curious? Mr. Ollivander fixed Harry with his pale stare. I remember every wand I've ever sold, Mr. Potter. Every single wand. It so happens that the phoenix whose tail feather is in your wand gave another feather, just one other. It is very curious indeed that you should be destined for this wand when its brother, why its brother, gave you that scar. Harry swallowed, yes. Thirteen and a half inches, you. Curious indeed how these things happen. The wand chooses the wizard, remember? I think we must expect great things from you, Mr. Potter. After all, he who must not be named did great things. Terrible, yes, but great. Harry shivered. He wasn't sure he liked Mr. Ollivander too much. He paid seven gold galleons for his wand, and Mr. Ollivander bowed them from his shop. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'm allowed to take a few questions if there's anyone who would like to ask a question about Harry Potter or about writing books or anything like that. In the, in the pink t-shirt there. Why did fireworks shoot out of his wand? It was a, just a sign that the wand recognized its real owner. An important feature of the books, um, and I have to be careful what I say in case you haven't read all the books and you would like to, an important feature of the books is that when, you, when the wand that really is meant for you finds its rightful owner, it will work very well. So that's why the spark shot out. It was just a sign that the wand recognized Harry as the person who should own it. In the smart shirt. Do I think that the movie producers do a good job for the story? Yes, I do. I do. I sometimes meet readers of the books who say to me, oh, they didn't include everything. But realistically, if they included everything in the books, the films would have to be 15 hours long. So I have to accept, as fans of the books have to accept, that they have to cut somewhere. But yeah, on, uh, on the whole, I think they've been great. I think they've been really great. And the actors they've chosen to play the characters are really like the people as I imagine them. So, um, yeah, I've been very, very happy. Yes. Um, let's see. Yes, in the purple. You need to really shout. Why did I decide to write about witches and wizards? Was that, um, well, it's a slightly like the wand choosing the wizards. It felt like it chose me. I just had the idea very suddenly. And um, I've always been very interested in folklore and uh, fairy tales and the way that you often find them in different cultures. So it was exciting to write a book about a world that united lots of those themes. But really, the idea came very suddenly. It wasn't a conscious, a conscious process. Yes. Well, that was how, when, how did I get the idea, the, the first idea? I was on a train traveling from uh, the north of England right down to London. And uh, it just came to me. I was looking out of the window and the initial idea was a boy who doesn't know he's a wizard 
gets the letter to say he goes to wizard school. And then my mind just started firing in all directions, what the school would be like, who he would meet there, and how it would feel not to realize that you were the son of famous parents, which is something that he realizes very soon after he gets that invitation. So, yeah. My favorite Harry Potter book is probably the seventh one. Yeah, I, I yes, I, which was a great way to end the series. But this one, the first one, of course, has a very important part in my place in my heart because it's the first thing I ever got published. So, yes, but you really need to really shout your question. How does Harry Potter get to... Oh, how did he get his lightning scar? Good question, very good question. When he was a little bit younger than you, a very evil wizard tried to kill him. The evil wizard killed his parents and then he tried to kill Harry, but he couldn't kill Harry. So that's the great mystery of Harry's life and that's why when he goes to school, He's very famous because he's, he is the only boy who ever survived an attack by that wizard and no one knows why. And really Harry's whole journey through the seven books is to try and find out why he survived. You need to really shout over... Why did he survive? Well, I would have to explain a lot to tell you. It is a good question. It's the best question. But I can't really answer it without giving away the ending of book seven. And just in case anyone is halfway through the books, I don't want to spoil the end of the story for them. Yes. Oh, I ha I've, I've been told I have just two more because there's another reading co reader coming. Sorry. Yes, you. Yes. Well, that your characters, this is a question about how you make up your characters. And you often find that they develop as you write them, so that you then, you, you go back and start again, because you, you might have the, an idea for a blonde girl in sunglasses, but she may change as you write her and turn into something different. So it's a very, it's an ongoing process. And a last, last question, I've got to take a redhead. My favorite character in the books, is it truly is impossible to choose one, but setting aside Harry, Ron, and Hermione, uh, Dumbledore. Dumbledore is the character I miss the most because he was, uh, he came from, I think he came from a place right at the back of my brain and he often told me things I needed to hear, you know, so I miss, yeah, I would miss Dumbledore the most. But I loved writing Snape. I wouldn't want to meet him but I really enjoyed writing him, he was fun. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for because someone else has to come on and read. So thank you very much for your great questions. Thank you.